Buongiorno, ciao tutti, benvenuti oppure bentornato. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Live at Five with Louise in the Vinny de Pew kitchen. So tonight it's polpette di patate. What is that? It's like, I hate to call it meatballs, but they're shaped like meatballs, but it's potatoes. So if you're a vegetarian, it's kind of a cool thing. So let's jump in and get started. We're gonna turn on the pan and get some olive oil heating up so that we can add some garlic and onions. And it's gonna smell amazing in here in no time. So let's get that going. And olive oil, my favorite olive oil. You know, I don't know, a couple teaspoons, just a, enough to cover up the, just about cover up the bottom of the pan. Mm-hmm. You need to lick that special off. And then um, let's get this hot, a little sizzle. We already um, started on the potatoes. We, me, I started on the potatoes because I didn't think we needed to get a lesson on how to boil a potato. So those are all ready to go. And while the oil is heating up in the pan, let's get started on the potatoes. So I, I think I look for recipes. Any excuse to use my sieve here. I love this thing. You could use a potato ricer. You could use like a handheld potato smasher. Anything that's going to smash up the potato and um, get rid of all the lumps. And I'm thinking about these potatoes. And one of the things I'm thinking about is um, this could be a possibility for a riff on mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. If your tradition is similar to my tradition, which my tradition is to always come up with a new dish to introduce at Thanksgiving and serve up, then this might serve that purpose. It's um, mashed, essentially mashed potatoes rolled up into a ball, but there's some yummy things added. Before we do that, let's, um, okay, that's hot or getting hot. So earlier I diced and sliced a half of red onion. It doesn't matter. You could use a red, a white, a yellow, whatever. I wanted the color, kind of the fun and the color and the taste of a red onion. So that's what I did. So we're going to put that into the olive oil and get that started. Talk to a Sorella says, hi, Susie, in charge of all things Italian. Oh, that's my sister-in-law. Yeah. Oh, your sister-in-law. Okay. Hi, Susie. Ciao, Susie. So, oh, this smells so good. Is it? I don't know. I know the smell of baking bread is pretty awesome, but I think the smell of garlic and onions cooking together is pretty awesome. So, I like to cheat when I do my clove of garlic. I just put it in a mincer because it's a whole lot quicker and faster than chopping. So, I'm going to put the garlic in and then come over here to the pan and mince it directly right into my olive oil. There we go. And no fuss, no mess. It's minced. It's going in there. And we're going to do the onions and the garlic mm, until the onions are translucent and kind of soft. So there's that. And we'll let this work its magic. I'm going to put this on about medium. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's our, cooking. Our friend and former neighbor, Marty Baker. Hola, chica. Ah, Marty from Spain. So we have she says, home desert in the house and Spain in the house. How cool is that? She says, happy to join you from Valencia. Happy to have you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is rice the potatoes, essentially, is what that what we're doing. I'm not using a ricer. I'm using my handy dandy little, what I like to refer to as the dunce hat. It's like, but I'm always looking for an excuse to use that little apparatus. You know, if you put it on your head, you could say, I don't can. Exactly. Like the it's also of like the, yeah, the Wizard of Oz, yeah. the guy without the, the Tin Man without mm -hmm. a heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that goes in there. And there we go. So these potatoes. I threw them into some salted water, <clears throat> cut them into chunks so that they cook a little faster. And once it started boiling, I set the timer for like about 10 minutes and they're done. So this doesn't really take very long. Another option is you can always stick a fork in it to see if it's done or a knife. 
Does, uh, red or yellow potatoes, does it matter? Um, great question, potatoes. I use Yukon Gold. They're my favorites for doing this kind of thing. Um, yeah, in fact, next week, what I'm going to make is a bak bakala. Yeah, and it also will, I'll use Yukon Gold. So here, let's watch this, you guys. This is so much fun, look at this. I'm just gonna smoosh this down into the potatoes and you can watch the watch them kind of oosh out of the holes and this is like an awesome way to get a nice smooth tomato and you can put that back down and then they can watch it from oh there we go you can see that there. so look how cool this is it comes out it looks like you know i don't know kind of I want to say like worms, but that's kind of gross. I don't want to use a worm analogy. Like short, like super long rice or super short pasta. It's kind of fun. And then I'm going to just scrape the extra potato off the, I don't even know what this thing is called. Maybe like a, I'm just going to call it that cone looking thing. This hardwood cone thing that I, I found this little piece of equipment at a secondhand store. I just love a good score. All right, so we'll get all that potato and there. And I'm gonna quick dash over to the pan and check on the garlic and the onions. They smell awesome. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit because we want the onions to get soft and translucent without burning the garlic because burnt garlic gets quite bitter. Okay, so they can keep doing, working its magic while we come back over here and Come back and play with the potatoes again. Okay, so there's that. And I want to get every little ounce of yummy potato. Oh, speaking of potatoes, I used about two average size Yukon Golds for this recipe. And this recipe actually comes to us from Dina, my friend who now lives not far from Siena, but she's from the Puglia region. And so this is a traditional Pugliese dish, which is in southern Italy. Um, and the Italians, it's like, they use pasta, or, uh, potatoes quite a bit in their recipes. You can even find pizza over there with potatoes on pizza. So I don't want to waste any of this awesome potato. So let's scrape all that into the bowl. There we go. So I have my production assistant tonight. It's Mary tonight. And so she's doing all my camera work. <laughs> so shout out to Mary for her help. Um, I did bribe her. There. I did bribe her with um, a glass of red wine. That's how I get my help because um, this is a low budget operation here. <laughs> I just bribe with wine. Okay, so there's that. We'll put that in the sink and get it out of the way. And then, oh, there's a few more potatoes that need to go in there. There we go. So here is our potato mixture. And look at that. Um, you can see it's already getting smooth just with the spatula and no lumps. So even if you want to do like straight up regular mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving, I highly recommend this little racer thingy to get them so super smooth. Okay, back over here. Look at me multitasking tonight. Keeping an eye on the onions and they're coming along and smelling pretty amazing, I might add. And there's a little crisp, oh, that's just good. A little crispy good cheese in there. And we're gonna give those a couple more minutes. So for preparing these potatoes, to become balls, and who knew that potatoes had balls? 
but um, they do. Are they going to in a minute here? It just went to PG, the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do, when I post these on uh, YouTube, I, I also say that they're not for children. These episodes are not for children. So here's about mm, 80 grams of ricotta. And you'll notice that it's the actual, there's no whey in here. So it's just straight up the ricotta. Let's throw that in to our potato mixture. Bam, bam, do a little mixy there. Um, we're gonna do a little egg to help kind of feed a little bit of a glue here and hold it all together. So one egg goes into the potato mixture. Mm, and this is about four teaspoons of milk, which I previously measured to save you all from having to watch that. And then we can start mixing this together and get a little cream action going here. And I think we need a little salt and pepper in that mixture. Let's give this a, there we go, nice little dash of salt, another dash of pepper. There we go. A little mixeroo. And you can see from this texture that clearly this is not going to be holding the shape of a meatball. So now we're going to add the breadcrumbs. And these are the super fine breadcrumbs that I just bought at the grocery store. <laughs> and I'm going to, little by little, add a dash of the breadcrumbs and mix to see how the texture turns out so this is again you're going to have to do this by eye and feel i measured out oh i don't know about 80 grams of breadcrumbs just to have them on hand and available and i will continue adding and mixing until the consistency of the potatoes is quite stiff and while we're doing that guess what multitask time to check on our, what's going to be our sauce. So these have shrunk up quite a bit. It's going to put some sauce on top of the meatballs. And so right now I'm getting a little base to the sugo, which is sauce. Oh, that's okay. You can put that down. Yep. Thanks. Yep. And then I'm adding tomato puree which is about two cups. You can hear it simmering and sizzling. And then we're gonna let this cook down for <laughs> about 10 minutes. And so while this is cooking down and working its magic, we'll come back to the potatoes and give them some love and attention. There we go. So Virgi Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Hey, hey Virginia. Virginia. Potatoes have cojones. Yes, they do now. Okay. They do now. Okay, we're setting the timer for 10 minutes on that sauce to reduce. Okay, so here we are back at the potato mixture and just smooshing this around, integrating the breadcrumbs. Clearly needs more breadcrumbs. There we go. And mix, mix, mix. So this is like, y'all could like run to your cupboards and pull this one together tonight after watching the video. And if anybody does, post photos either on the Facebook timeline for Dini DePew and tag or put it on your own FaceTime. What's not FaceTime? What's it called? Timeline oh. on Facebook and tag Dini DePew. We have a question from Una Demanda from uh, Marty. Any seasoning besides onion and garlic going into the sauce? No, because those tomatoes are so awesome. Um, it's just tomato puree. So no, just salt and pepper into the, well, I'll put some salt and pepper. Actually, we'll put salt and pepper in the sauce in a minute. Good question. Salt and pepper goes into the potato mixture and salt and pepper into the tomatoes. So thanks for reminding me, Marty. I'm gonna do it right now before we forget. Big old healthy dose pinch of pepper in the sauce. 
And look at that, Marty's helping from Spain. Looks like she's not even here. She's still helping me remember to put the seasoning in. There you go. Perfect. Now, and you can see now this texture is getting a little stiffer. Oh yeah. Now it's getting the texture of like cold leftover mashed potatoes from Thanksgiving. Okay, so you know what? Mm, let's see. I'm going to give them a little more breadcrumbs. A few more breadcrumbs. So it can hold up to the shape. There we go. Okay, so um, any other questions or ideas or thoughts? So this could be like a contorni. A side dish um, you know I'm also thinking you could probably pull this off as a any pasty too like an any pasta like have it kind of like it's a little bit of an appetizer maybe mm -hmm. um, after it cooled off like if you made it ahead of time that you could have this as an any pasty okay so mm, let's see how is that you know what I'm gonna add the rest of the breadcrumbs in here we're gonna make this a super stiff dough. We want our mashed potatoes to really hold up. The dough, they do, they totally look like meatballs. Oh, I forgot to set the timer um, for what I put in the oven. But I'm not gonna worry, it's already, okay. it's already timing okay. the um, sauce. I kind of put it in right before five, so I'll know. There we go. <clears throat> And we're on a new time zone right now. Yeah, we're into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Congress, we finally got back that hour of time that Congress stole from us in the springtime. And we're, it's already dark out, which is kind of funny. Oh, oh, yeah, look at this. Now, can you see this texture? It's almost like a, a pie dough texture. Mm -hmm. So it's quite stiff. And there we go. And that's it. So I put Kota in here, mm, a little milk, breadcrumbs, mm, salt and pepper. Seems to me there's something else, but I don't remember what it was right now. I'll put it in the comments in the, the recipe so that y'all can try this out yourselves. All right. Looks like. So while we continue to wait for the sauce to work its magic, and it smells pretty magical right now, it's time for a little sip. And it's time for red wine. When the weather cools off, it's time to drink red. Okay, so there's that. And this is simmering over here. And so it's bubbling. Oh. It's bubbling similar to like um, the paint pots in Yellowstone. Oh. Is there another question? No, Marty just said egg, so that was the Oh, yeah, egg. Thank mm -hmm. you, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. She's taking notes. <laughs> okay, so there's that. We have a few more minutes on that. It's cooking down, thickening up a tad. And I'm going to give that a little more heat, just barely. I was thinking, you know, I could also put... Well, I'm not going to mess with Gina's recipe. I was thinking, oh, I could riff a little bit and throw in some pepper flakes. That would be yummy in that sauce. But I'm going to follow Dina's rules tonight. Because what Dina tells me to do, I do. <laughs> so, this is going to go in the oven. I'm just going to use like a, a uh, what's this called, ceramic kind of pie dish to put the balls in. <laughs> I love saying that. I'm going to put the balls in the you, oven. You, you've been saying the word stiff a lot, too. So, um... <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Mary. Okay, so a couple of teaspoons of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. Or, yeah, dish. This isn't even a pan, it's a dish. And then, um, give my hands a little grubby dub before I start handling the stiff raw dough. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna scoop out a little dough and there it is. Sip 
the size of a meatball. I'm gonna just put it in this dish. Actually, I'm gonna rub, rub. I'm gonna rub. <laughs> oh my god. We gotta, we gotta watch our vocabulary list. Yeah, I totally have to watch my vocabulary in this one. I'm going to roll the oil in the bottom of the pan and then place one of the potato balls in there. I'm gonna scoop out a little more. And then we're gonna roll this up. There we go. I do have a pan of the potato balls. Uh, let's just call them polpette. That's that's a lot safer. Yeah, we'll call sounds them better. Polpette, because um, my resistance to calling it polpette is that it's also the word for meatball, and there's no meat in this. But um, it's polpette di patate, and patate is the Italian word for potato. Ooh, that's a little. Thicker. Well, although it's not like they have to cook. Cook, cook, as in you don't want raw meat as your end product. There we go. So there's another little ball. Pull pette. There we go. How much time do we have on the sauce? A couple of three minutes left on the sauce. It's bubbling away over here. Yes. Oh. One of the best things about doing these Facebook Lives is the smell in my house every week. And it's like, it smells so good. And then, of course, eating the end product is always pretty fun. At least I know how to cook once a week. There we go. There's that. Ooh. We're going to get cozy in there. I don't know if that dish is big enough. <clears throat> All righty. I'm thinking, oh, you know what, and to serve this up, it's like, tonight this will be kind of like a contorni. I'll um, probably throw together a little bit of a salad. Also have some uh, leftover, surprise, surprise, eggplant, <laughs> which is um, a riff on eggplant parmesan that I got the, that recipe from Simonetta in Orazio, which is kind of fun. He's Sicilian and she's from Northern Italy. You put the two of them together and you get quite the culinary treat and combos. So there we go. All right, I think I'm going to get one more yeah. pulpette out of here. And, and then, then can you show them your balls when you get them all in there? <laughs> pulpette? Because it's getting crowded. It is getting crowded in here. But they're not going anywhere. They're all comfy, cozy, and they're best friends. There we go. And so this is it. Now... I think we have a few seconds left on the sauce. I will pour the sauce on top of the potato and then pop that into the oven for mm, about 30 minutes at a, mm, 360 degrees. That's what I'm calling it. 180 degrees centigrade is about 360 degrees Fahrenheit. And since my oven is Fahrenheit, that's what we're going with. Um, oh. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this over so you guys can see the sauce. So here's the sauce. You kind of can see it bubbling. It looks reminds me of those paint pots in Yellowstone. All right, those are going. Stir. And let's... Oh, good. Timer. All right, so there are... Polpette. I'm going to turn off the heat on the sauce. And there you go. There's here. Let's move those out of the way so you can see the sauce and kind of see the consistency of that. There we go. So it's you know similar to a spaghetti sauce. Oh, let's see how that. Mmm. Seasoning on that's really good. So yeah, um, the tomato. Flavor is so good on that sauce. It doesn't need a lot of other seasoning other than the salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic and onion. And now we're gonna spoon a little sauce on top of our polpette. <clears throat> what kind of sauce do you use for your sauce? I use, there, I do a couple of things. 
Sometimes I'll buy the tomato puree out of the glass jars. It's an Italian product. It comes from Italy. The other thing I'll sometimes do because I love the San Marzano so much, I'll open up a can of San Marzano's and I already had to confess to y'all how much I love to use my little sieve uh, dunce hat thing and I put the can of San Marzano's in there, run it through the sieve and it makes for a fabulous tomato puree and here we go we're gonna San Marzano's comes from the um, south right what, near Naples, Naples. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. it's the, the they're special because the dirt and that they're grown in is from Vesuvius mm -hmm. Pop this into the oven, and I'm going to pull out the one I put in the oven earlier before we went live so that you guys could see and we could do a taste. Oh, ow! Oh, hot! Hot! Oh, hot! That was hot. Did you hear it? That was hot. Okay, now this is going to go in the oven for 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna get thicker uh, towels. I'm not gonna do that again. Well, that was seriously hot. So the first batch I did, I did in a metal pan, and now we're gonna do it in ceramic, and we'll see if that has any difference on makes any difference on anything. So here it is. We're gonna scoop this out, and Mary and I are gonna do a little taste test and let you know the verdict. Here you go, Mayor. There we go. <coughs> That's it. There you go. And now, let me try one of these. I'll let you know. Oh, we probably ought to let it cool down. You want some more sauce on top of your polpette? Sure. There we go. A little more. What a great winter dish. This is an awesome kind of, it feels sure. so cozy yeah. right now, doesn't it? It's like comfort. Uh, kind of, yeah, it is a comfort food. The tomato, the potato, all the little comfort food. All the three and, syllable words, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. The tomato, the <laughs> potato, in November, the polkette. Mm -hmm. Um, let's get some forks. No, okay. it's already dark out. It's like bon appetito. We'll let you know how this is. Ooh. Mm. Okay, this I definitely. Mm. 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 It tastes like a really moist. Like a it, ravioli, not you know, just mm. really, really moist. Mm. So it's funny because mm. the shape of it and everything's a little deceiving. I'm expecting like a meat texture, but it's really quite smooth from the potato, and the sauce is awesome. So there's like actually, the most of the flavor comes from the sauce. Oh, I'm either really hungry or I'm it's watching this. Hi, Marty. <laughs> okay, so this is yummy, and there's plenty here. So um, I'll have to take some over to the neighbors next door see if they want some. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, bon appetito, and remember, post photos if you make this. The recipe with the directions will be posted on jimmydepew.com website, mm -hmm. as well as also on YouTube. So. Ciao, buona notte, buona serata, a domani, no, a settimana. Ciao, ciao. Mm.